Hey, thanks so much for being here this morning. The border issue has uh, become a national issue. Uh, recently, it's been said every state is a border state now with the fentanyl crisis. But here in Arizona, the crisis level is is immense. Uh, joining us in studio is Taylor Tassler from uh, KTAR News. Thanks for doing this, Taylor. Of course. Uh, you had a, kind of an exclusive, long-form conversation with the head of the Yuma Regional Medical Center. Yes. And they were talking about the seriousness of the financial difficulties caused by migrants coming into the state of Arizona. Yeah, so essentially the hospital is $26 million in the hole from providing health care to migrants, and it's much more than $26 million. Um, it's because they're providing hotel rooms, transportation, food, uh, diapers. Um, so it's more than that, but that's just the medical care. And, and, and obviously in America, when there is a medical need, we fill it. And a lot of these cases are women that are pregnant that are in desperate need of prenatal care. Is that right? Yeah, so I talked to the CEO and president of the Yuma Regional Medical Center. Um, his name's Dr. Robert Trenchell. And he told me that a majority of the patients that are coming into the hospital, they're pregnant. And he tells me that they have no prenatal care. And so when the babies are born, the babies are born very ill. And they are required to stay in you know, the ICU or stay in the hospital for an extended period of time which, and it's not a very big hospital. Yuma's not a huge area, so it's taking up space that they need. And for parents out there that unfortunately have ever had to deal with this, the NICU is very expensive. That is a, that is a very specialized, very expensive treatment on those young children, necessary, obviously. So this $26 million, is there a prospect that the hospital can recover any of this money? At the moment, um, from my conversation with Dr. Trenchold, there isn't. Um, he has talked to both the U.S. senators. I asked him if he's had any direct conversations with the Biden administration. He says he hasn't, and those conversations will happen through the senators. But necessarily, I, he told me, you know, everyone is willing to listen and be sympathetic about it, but there really isn't a solution. He's tried to go through Medicare, and they say, sorry, these people are in transit. You can try to track them down at the state that they end up in, but it isn't an option at the moment. And the people that are getting this care generally are coming here with nothing but the clothes on their back anyway. So even if you were to find them and get a judgment against them, against them, the, the possibility of recovering that kind of money is almost impossible. Yeah, so they, and I asked him, you know, how is this affecting the hospital? Where is this money com coming from? You know, how is it gonna affect your operations? And he told me what it's really affecting is, you know, they can't maybe upgrade their equipment or they can't hire more staff. Um, that's where this money's coming from. So it's directly affecting the hospital and its operations as well. We had heard about financial collapse was a phrase I heard. Are they saying that they are in danger of closing? Are they, in, is it not gotten that bad? That was not the understanding that I got. I I mean, $26 million is a lot of money, but you know, the CEO basically told me, we're going to continue this. We take pride in caring for everyone, and this is something we're going to continue to do, and we're going to continue to try to find a payer source. So I don't think that they are on the brink of collapse that the hospital is going to close, but it's a scary thought because it's the only hospital within 180 miles. Yeah, and, and, and there's no politics in the Hippocratic Oath. It, they are they are bound to do well and to do no harm and to help people. It's not about politics. It's not about where you come from. When they are presented with a human being that has a need, they have an obligation to fill that need. It's just costing them. And the people of Yuma are in danger of not having the health care that they deserve because of what this crisis that's happening, correct? Yeah, it really is affecting the residents of Yuma as well when you have – let's say these maternity patients, because that is a majority of it, you know, they're coming with no prenatal care. The babies are being born ill, so they're having an extended stay. He was telling me, let's say you live in Yuma and you had scheduled to be induced and you flew family in and you've taken time off work. That could easily get pushed off because a migrant comes in and needs the, to take up a, a spot in the hospital because they are ill or they are in the process of giving birth. And now your induction is pushed off or any really non-emergency procedure that Yuma residents need is pushed off. So when it comes to the finances, my last question is about, you said they're having conversations through the senators with what can be done. Is there been, has there been some proposals that DC step in with some kind of spending to offset this cost? Is that still, a, a, that conversation still alive? 
So he didn't really, he's spoken to them and they've kind of taken it, taken it to Washington. He hasn't really heard much back. I've reached out to both the senators and haven't heard back from them either. But he has also in the past two weeks testified in front of House Judiciary hearings twice. Right. Um, so the House is very aware of it. Um, Andy Biggs was there, Jim Jordan. So they are aware of it. So, you know, maybe the House is making progress and having those conversations with the White House. Taylor, I appreciate the great work. If if, if uh, people want to read the piece, it's at KTAR.com. It, was, it really is compelling and very informational. So thanks. Thank you.